Hello. Hi. <laughs> so we're posing the question today. I got Amelia here to answer some questions and kind of spark a little discussion, um, kind of on the expenses uh, when it comes to living a healthy lifestyle. Um, some of the counting questions or concerns are gym memberships, personal trainers, eating healthier, all cost money. They all cost a lot. And a lot. <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, uh, the time investment, you know, seems to be an issue. I don't have yeah. time for this um, to go work out, to to prep cook, to go shopping, you know, on a regular basis. So we're going to kind of answer a little bit of that, uh, address some of those concerns, um, yep. and hopefully help somebody out here clear up some of those um, and kind of draw, you know, a new perspective, uh, put a new light on things. Um, Kind of clarify things a little bit so yeah thoughts all on right that. everything costs too much everything costs too much okay well let's talk about membership gym memberships first right right um it's like what you average 40 bucks you said about 40 dollars a month is is average it can be anywhere from you know 30 to 100 depending on where you're going right um, and, right. and you know the area things right. like that but well let's be honest here that's not expensive <laughs> like being able to pay that much to go to a gym, have unlimited access, have all these machines available. Right, like, and most gyms are 24-7 now. Yeah. Most of them. Not and all like, of them, but... And when you think about it, I mean, think about it in the gym's perspective, too. Like, they have to maintain the equipment, they have to pay their employees, they have to clean up everything, they gotta do this and this. So, like, 40 bucks helps them out, too, and, like, it helps you have a clean gym have this new equipment have all these people that you can talk to and get help from so like 40 bucks a month I hate, all that bad. I, yeah that's a silly excuse well and like you were saying earlier like 40 dollars like that's one time going out to dinner yeah for, for two people yeah just exactly. two people going out to dinner one time a month like that's a gym membership right like put the put the money aside be like oh i want to go out tonight say no let me save this money and put it towards a gym membership instead like those moments when you're like let's go out tonight maybe don't maybe put it towards something else like going to the gym something Fair like enough. that yeah <laughs> i mean that's things that i like to think about when it's like i'm starting i want to start including things but i don't have the money i think oh what can i take out or at least start not doing as much to save that I think a lot of it comes down to prioritizing. Yeah. You know, like, if you want to get healthier or fitter and you want to go to the gym, like, a little bit of sacrifice is kind of made. Right. You know? Like you said, don't go out as much. Yeah. And like I said, all you really have to do is go out one less time. Right, exactly. You know? And that's not really that bad for people that are going out every weekend. Right. I guess the next thing would be is, I'm just starting this, right? I don't know what I'm doing. If I went to the gym, I have no clue what I'm doing. So, a lot of people hire personal trainers for that. Right. 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 Now, I understand this because personal trainers can be expensive. I was also doing the research. It can range anywhere from $30 a session to $70, $80, you know, yeah. for an hour with a personal trainer. Right. You know, so how would you justify that? See, I, I, I also understand that one. It does seem like a lot, but when you think about it, again, think of it from the trainer's perspective. It's like... You know, you have usually a free consultation, right? Yeah. That's usually. And in that time, you get to know the trainer, and the trainer really gets to know you. You, They ask you your medical history, if there's any sort of issues going on, your goals, you start setting SMART goals, and then they have to go out and do the research. They are going to personalize the program just for you, and they're gonna train you how to use the machines properly. Like, that's another issue. Like. A lot of people that just have memberships and don't have sort of a one-on-one -on -one session, at least a few times, they don't know how to properly use the equipment, right? You right. know, like, and that can cause injury, which makes you not work out and makes you scared to go back to the gym. So, like, being able to invest in someone that will get to know you and hopefully, you know, you like them as a person and... You should. Yeah. You should. You should like your trainer. Yeah, like right? fi find a trainer that you do like. Don't just stick with one and think that you're getting the best of the best. Just 
because someone told you so. Find someone that actually connects with you. And that's another thing, you know, you start to connect personally. Like, you make a friend. And, like, they're doing the research. They're helping you out. They're really pushing you to get your goals. That's another thing. Like, Motivation. When, yeah, when I'm working out by myself, I, I can get a good workout in, but I'm not pushing myself past where I should, where I feel like I need to be, you know? And I don't always notice that. But then when, like, we're working out together, I'm like, okay, you know, I got to fucking lift heavier this time. And, like, as a personal trainer, you would make me lift heavier. You know, you'd see, oh, this is too easy for her. I'm going to increase the weight, like, the weight. Right. You'd, like, make me do that. And then, like, that would get you so much closer to your goals. Like, that's another thing. You, you would get to your goals a lot faster with somebody helping you out. Personally. I mean, I mean, so, and then also, like, you know, you're investing in not just the personal trainer you're investing that money into yourself yeah you're hiring a personal trainer but that money goes into you pretty much like the results and all of it all really. of it you're yeah all, <laughs> you are getting a personalized program yeah specifically for your goals and your personal development right you know um and that's you know definitely something to consider right and that goes a long way too right. like it's not even just for however many sessions you have with that person like they helped you grow as a person you know you if you if you get the right trainer i feel like they help you grow mentally and like allow you to see a lot of new perspectives on how to live your life right in a healthier way at least you know well it's the thing and then you you now have a resource somebody to go to with all your questions even outside the gym i'm not saying all trainers do it but you know most of them will answer your text back when you're out there, you're at the store, you got a question, or you're at the gym without them and you got a question, or you're having some motivational uh, controversy with yourself and you, you text them for support, and you know, like, that goes along with it. Like, so, like, what I'm getting from what you're saying, what I feel is, you know, there's just so much more than just that one hour session. Yeah. You know, there's so much more than just coming in here, having somebody tell you what to do. You know, Absolutely, or going to yeah. a gym and having a trainer tell you what to do. Like, you're, that's not where that money is going to. Right. You know, at least not as a whole. That's right. part of it, but there's right. just so much more to it. Um, yeah. You know, so it, it is. It's an investment in yourself. Um, like, I, I, I don't want people to think, oh, this is... If you have a trainer and you're not getting what you want, then you can start thinking, wow, I'm wasting money. <laughs> You right. know, but, like, that's why you got to find that trainer that will be there for you and fits the criteria that you want. Because then it doesn't feel like a waste of money. It never should feel like a waste of money. The trainer should be there to help you feel like it is an investment, you know? So, yeah. I get it. It's scary. I mean, yeah, it's not easy <laughs> finding someone that you want to work with and, like, that will be the person you want them to be but like it's worth going out there and finding it shop around yeah you know yeah. there's all sorts of different it's, styles of trainers yeah all sorts of different you know personalities yeah. and there's always there's always going to be that one in your area that you can relate to um that's on your level yeah um, personality wise character wise and you know like that's who you gotta find yeah and like don't feel bad having to be a trainer you know like if it's not working out don't feel bad like they should understand. Yeah. You know, like don't be like, oh, I don't, I don't think we see eye to eye, and then stick around. Be like, oh, I, you know, this isn't working out for me, and just go find someone that does. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. So, after that, I guess the the third main concern is is eating healthy. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Eating healthy, and this one might be a little long, but. <laughs> <laughs> and don't be offended by yeah, please anything don't be offended. that we say, okay? It's just the truth. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's straight facts. <laughs> yes. Um, eating healthy costs more than not eating healthy. And I have my own <laughs> views on this. Um, but what I found, and I'm going to let you explain to your side of things, but yeah. where we're about to come from isn't just us. This is you know thousands of professionals that'll tell you the same thing so don't 
you know, we're not just full of shit. You're just talking right. crazy at right. you. You know, this right. is just the reality of the situation. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, go ahead. I'll let you go yeah. ahead. Yeah, well, so people obviously, you know, strongly believe eating healthy is very expensive for some reason. It seemed fresh. Yeah. And I get it, you know, I can kind of see where you're coming from. You know, you look at apples, I use apples as an example, you know, like a dollar thirty per pound, right? That can be expensive, right? But then when you look at vegetables, like <laughs> vegetables are relatively <laughs> inexpensive. Yeah, and then we talked about we like organic versus non organic. And I organic can be a lot more expensive. But you don't need to buy organic because the nutritional value is exactly the same thing and it can still be cheap. And when you get a frozen meal, when you look at it, if you were to measure out everything in that one meal, it would be way more expensive than buying in bulk the other, all of the ingredients and cooking that for several meals. Right. Like per pound, you know, if you want to break it down, like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, so I use the example uh, that I used earlier with the chicken, the rice, yeah. the potatoes, the vegetables. You know, like she mentioned earlier too, like a lot of the perception is, well, I, I have to cook these fancy meals. I, healthy food has to, you know, be extremely <laughs> complicated. It has to be, yeah, I'm going to a five-star restaurant <laughs> for these healthy meals. I have to, you know, buy all these different things and... uh you know, like that's not the case at all. No. When I go on my, my on my meal prep, um, for when I am trying to do a cut or you know whatever it is that I'm trying to do, I, I try to meal prep, um, which I found is the most cost effective, time effective, right? It's the most efficient and effective method that I've used before. Uh, and even if you don't believe in the microwave, you don't have to use the microwave. Right. You know, you can yeah. simply just recook things in the skillet yeah. or whatever it is. Exactly. And you know, with the, the, the it, it's simple. Right, find foods that you like. My three go-tos are chicken, chicken breast, uh, salmon, and turkey. turkey. Yeah. Usually ground turkey because you can do so many different things with it. Um, and then my grains are usually brown rice, quinoa, or you know, for other carbs, sometimes I use like a sweet potato right. or something like that. Simple. It's really simple stuff. Um, and then vegetables. I honestly, I buy frozen vegetables. Yeah. I buy them in these four-serving oh, yeah. packs for a dollar each for a dollar for four servings of vegetables by the way um and yeah you can never <laughs> eat too many cheap. vegetables it's super cheap even if you buy fresh vegetables it's, it's really not that expensive yeah um you know i can buy two of those and feed my whole family right right each yeah. two dollars yeah uh, so you know i i cook up 10 pounds of chicken at one time or i freeze whatever i don't cook up you know 10 pounds of chicken about ten dollars you know roughly yeah. Right, um, it's usually a dollar to a dollar fifty yeah. a pound of chicken, um, and and you only need four ounces, right. depending on you know three to five ounces depending on the person right. of chicken. Right. So you got all this chicken for ten dollars. You got you can buy a box of brown rice. For, anyway, long story short is like it doesn't have to be complicated. You can buy some a little bit of seasoning to put into it. You know, and I make time wise right because that's a, a, a factor. Yep. Time is a factor. I used to prep six meals at a time in under an hour, right? So I'd have two, three days worth of meals all ready to go for me under an hour. It takes me about 10 minutes to warm them up if I'm doing it without a market with, bam, cost effective. I can literally spend, you know, 50, 75, even a hundred dollars a week and make an entire week's worth of healthy, nutritious meals. So me personally, I, I think it's a whole, bunch of bull right. when like people are trying to tell you that it costs money and then on top of it it's so even if you go to mcdonald's which is like one of the cheapest places you can go to eat you're still right. spending seven eight dollars on a meal yeah which at home i spent three four dollars right. on a meal per yeah. person yeah. Yeah. when yeah. i'm buying in bulk like that <laughs> you go out to dinner to you know applebee's for at least two 10. people at least ten dollars a person yeah so that that's not in my eyes, a valid argument no. that healthy eating costs more than it would to not eat. Yeah, right. And then even time-wise. And then we got into the discussion of 
paying for your health. I mean, like, this food is going to help you become a healthier person internally, so then you don't have to go to the doctor's office as often. Hopefully you don't end up in the hospital for some reason because of this and that, you know, like... Gut issues, yeah. heart complications, a lot of it stems, obesity, yeah. a lot of it stems from diet, and I guess right. that's kind of where you're going with Right, that. exactly, that's exactly where I'm going with it. Like, all, all of these things that we've talked to up to now, all factor into that, yeah. like... No more, you know, less sick days. Your immune system will build up. You know, you won't like you'll have. I, this is kind of gross, but like more fluid bowel mu movements, like which are very important to your it body. Is. Like you are supposed <laughs> to be going regularly. Yeah. You know, once a day doesn't really cut it <laughs> right. in the actual health world. Yeah, like you're supposed to. It's supposed to be however many meals. You, know, if you, you usually eat, say about two to three yeah, times a day. Yeah, two to three. It's right. healthy. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a good digestive system. Right. Well, and, I don't think that's the average, though. I think the average is about one. It's one time a day for most, and sometimes it's every other day for a lot right. of people. And you'd be surprised how normal that is. Not normal in the the, the in, health sense, yeah. but the normal as in Society. the majority of people, like, live in this state that they're unaware. Like, they don't know that that's not normal but it's the average right right the average person right. only goes zero to one times a day or once every other day that's not normal but it's average and right. and eating healthier eating the proper amount of fiber the, the the proper amount of your other macronutrients is going to help you know move your digestive system um and it's going to help with your your body mass right yeah. so if you're trying to build that lean body mass eating properly is going to help with that growing muscle you need a certain right. amount of protein you know, fats are actually important. Carbs, Carbs are, are actually too. important. You yes. know, like, so that's another thing that you get when when you're buying into this whole field is that knowledge, right? Yeah. Um, you know, taking away all those myths. Yes. You know, I feel like that's extremely yes. important. Like, stop, you know, just reading certain things from people who obviously have no idea what they're talking about. Right. And, like, and completely misconstruing like, like, like that's I mean we can we'll we'll talk about yeah, this in a whole so, other thing but like the whole <laughs> diet culture itself yeah. you know like that needs to just disappear stop fad diets you know yeah. people you got to remember and and we're not here to sell you anything right now we're just no. simply trying to put the facts out there yeah help uh, you out in some sort of way yeah right? like <laughs> marketing targets your state of mind. Yeah. Right? Fad diets prey on people. Right? Yeah. When they try to tell you that eating no carbs is good for you. Or that all fats are bad. Yeah. Or, you know, like when, when they say all or nothing, like that's usually a good indicator to me to stay away. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. when they're just saying be completely restrictive of this. Right. And only do this. Or, you know, anything along those lines, like I completely just... I'm good. Yep. I want nothing to do with that yes. because you need macronutrients, right? Macro is a big word. Yep. There are three macronutrients. These are ne necessary, yep. right? For, oh, for life. For your right? body and to those function. are carbs, fats, and proteins. Yeah. You know? And like, I feel like we completely overlook that word, yeah. macro. Yeah. Like, that is big. It's big. It means it big. Means big. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big part of a healthy balance diet you know right. balance is the key word there though because you know when it comes to dieting like balance is super important i'm not saying all fats are good i'm not saying all carbs are good right i'm not even saying all proteins are good right you know it, it too much of anything is never really good for no. you too much of anything though you know what i mean yeah. like so that's what we need to step away from like <laughs> And I think we're getting a little bit yeah, off topic yeah, here. Yeah, that, that's a whole other video. But to kind of reel things like, in, she was going off of the the idea that, you know, by by investing your money and time into these things, into this health and fitness, um, you know, you're reducing a lot of the costs elsewhere. And not just money, right? You're reducing the costs, yes, of going to the doctors, of medical bills, of, you know, dentist. losing, missing out on work. You get sick more. Your immune system is lower typically yeah. on average for people that eat less healthy and don't work out. The immune system, you, you lack energy, yep. 
right? We'll, we'll, uh, fatigue is a big thing yep. for a lot of people. Um, you know, just not having the energy to even play with your kids. You know, like right. that's a real issue. Yeah. Um, being being down all the time, depression, anxiety. You know, these are a lot of things that happen. And you'll you, I've never met personally anybody who's worked a solid program of fitness and ate healthy that is really overwhelmed with anxiety and depression yeah. or who is always sick you know or injured you right. know it yeah. reduces your risk of injury just slipping on the ice you know fit people get hurt less yeah. from just minor things like that um yeah and that that's for longevity of life a sustainable healthy life yeah. um but you're also you know the, the mental state the physical state these are all things that you're investing into and and the costs the, the physical and mental costs of not doing these things could be completely detrimental to your entire quality of life. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah. and, and here's the thing. This is the reality. Um, something that I feel I need to say. A lot of people are under this belief that the way that they're living is okay. And I'm not saying that it's not, right? I always talk about if you're comfortable living the way that you are, I, I can't say anything to you about it, yeah. right? That's completely fine. Yeah. If you've made the decision to eat the way that you do or to not exercise and sit on the couch, you know what? Like, I'm not judging you. I'm not condemning you at, by any means. It affects means. us in no way. No. You know, like, you know? And, do and you. Do you. Whatever. Completely okay with that. Um, but a lot of people are under this belief that being tired all the time, being sick all the time, or, or even periodically feeling, you know, weak, um, being overweight, like that's just normal. Like that's just how we are, right. you know, and that, that's not like we are meant to be active. Like if you look out through entire, I, I think people forget we're, we're animals, you know, by nature, we are part of the animal kingdom and animals need exercise. Like we, we, yes, we've lost. And this is where things make up for so long. We were hunter gatherers. Now that we're not, what do you think is making up for that? right that exercise that was so natural to us you know like that's what we were meant to do originally in the evolutionary process you know now that we don't have that stimulus you know like we're completely just yeah, setting the yeah, bar lower yeah. and you know something needs to make up for that right yeah. because if you haven't noticed as time goes by as the less active we get the higher rates of anxiety and depression go up uh medical bills for our entire society has gone up yep. right sickness mental health sick days all these things are on the rise as our activity and health go down right um it's not normal to be tired all the time no. it's not normal to not be motivated to do anything it's not normal you know to be sick you know every single season right you know it's not that's not normal that's not healthy right right and like if we want to touch on the time also like people saying i don't have time for this and this because i do i work i sit at a desk i do this it's like you're able to get up and do something every 10 minutes you know every 20 minutes even just like stand up for a second take 10 steps forward 10 steps back sit back down like literally anything i don't care if you don't dedicate an hour to purely just working out. I mean, I do care. Right. Like, I would hope that you would at least make the time for 30 minutes of this. But, like, if you really, really feel like you can't, for some, if you're working 12-hour days, just stand up for a second and just walk. You know, get a physio ball to sit on. Do some crunches every now and then on it. Do some, you know, like, something on... Do something. There's always <laughs> something to do. Yeah. I was just... Uh... Not too long ago, I'm sitting at the desk because I get I get tired from sitting too long. Yeah, I, I just do. hate it. And I, I gotta have stand up. I have one of those resistance bands at my desk, yeah. and I'm like just sitting there. I'm like, you know what? I need a break. I just <laughs> just start using it. And I'm like, but that's the thing. So like putting things in place to be able to do that. I have a client actually who's got one of those little like bike pedal things uh -huh. underneath her desk. Yes. I'm like, that's awesome. Yes, yes. do that because it's just something you can do at the desk. You don't even have to get up for that. Yeah. Like, so it's just it's again back to priorities. You know, like, if you really don't want to live that way and you want better, you want different, you know, you do the things necessary. Even if you're working a 12 day, you know, I know people who work, you know, 12, 15, 16 hours a day, and you know what they do? 
they still get off and they still go to the gym for half an hour at least right. to an hour. You know, I know people who are raising kids. I know I have clients that are raising a baby, mm-hmm. right? Who have a full time job raising a kid and they still make time because they understand that if they didn't, it wouldn't just affect them, it would affect their family too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's I guess a whole nother perspective, but mostly it's affecting them. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> And like, it, it's, time is not, there's 24 hours in a day. If you work eight hours a day, you sleep eight hours a day, that's 16 hours, yeah. you still have eight hours left in the day. Right. Right. You and know? I get it, and like, we'll go back to the cooking thing, too. Like, just make a quick meal, do rice, chicken, vegetables. Like Super simple. Super simple, easy minutes. to make, like, set, it, set your chicken in the oven, get your rice cooking, do something while that's all going. That's about 30, 20, 30 minutes right there. You know. I do push-ups in my kitchen while I'm cooking. <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I, I do calf raises while I'm cooking. Something. I'm like, just, yeah, and like, I mean, it does affect the family because your kids look up to you. You know, they, had, as a parent, your kids will watch you and admire what you do and learn from that. You know, if they see you exercising they're gonna want to you know hopefully eventually exercise too definitely you know definitely they're gonna want to participate in what you're doing because they want to be like you you know that's just how they work usually you know like so I don't exactly know, just, <laughs> well, well you I, mean you know, that now. <laughs> i'm not a professional in that area but yeah i know kids who look up to their parents yeah. who work out and they work out too yeah. you know they're more active you know yeah. kids who start out younger Right, or more likely to be active in their future. Right, and, like, and that's, that's those are just facts. I'm not yeah, like that's, that's just that's it. That is it. And that's that'd be and like how cool would that be to be a parent and be like, cool, I fucking taught you to do this. Like I influenced you to be yeah. active. You know, like that's awesome. Builds character. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's All right. For me. Yeah. yeah. No. So so that's it. Took up plenty of your time here. Um. Hopefully you guys took something something from this. At least one know. thing. Yeah. Hopefully. There's plenty to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully at least one thing hits something that you're working with. If not, drop a comment. Yeah. You know, ask questions. Everybody, I hope you got something from that video. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment. If you got any questions, concerns, let us know so we can keep doing this. We love it. Also leave a like. Please. There you go. Thank you so much. Oh, I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and then just cut it. <laughs> and then just put that in.